Good morning. What a good morning with the praise the Lord this morning. The Lord is still good. I'm just hoping and thinking that y'all had a good Christmas and a joyful Christmas and everybody got their little presents and God bless you. God bless you. Kept Christ in your Christmas and thank God for it. And now we're getting ready to have our Sunday school class this morning. Boy, we're going to have a dynamite Sunday school and let's see him this morning with the help of the Lord. In the name, oh, we put God ahead of everything. So with the help of Lord, and Lord, bring back my remembrance. Now, Lord, we finna say, pray, Lord, we thank you for what you've done, what you're about to do, Lord. Give us more power and grace, Lord. And help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, look on the Sunday school and bless it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, what I've learned and teaching and all that, Lord, and stay, bring you back to my members, Lord, so I could help somebody, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we want to say this morning to our pastor, David B. Carter, the Great New Plum Rock Baptist Church, and, and to all the congregation. Lord, we thank Lord for Pastor Carter this morning, all pastors that teaching and preaching in law. And all the congregation, the sick and the shut in. Now, Lord, we plan on having a good Sunday school lesson with you in the midst. And you said, well, two or three of that, you're going to be in the midst with us. So, and I hope this is to reach somebody today. So we're going to talk about a man today called John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, so many people say, John the Baptist, yeah. John the Baptist, he'll, John the Baptist is going to be doing something today that I hope we could catch cut hold to it. So our lesson subject for our lesson today is going to be calling to prepare the way. He's going to prepare the way. Not make the way. He's going to prepare the way. And our key verses in, in our printed verse. So that's our subject. Calling to prepare the way. Now look at him. Our lesson going to come from the book of Matthew. The third chapter, verse one through twelve, and our key verse gonna come from Matthew, third chapter, and the third verse, and the key verse says like this: "For this is he that was spoken by the prophet of Elias, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing in the way of the Lord, making his way, making his path." straight. He came to make the path straight, get all the crooks and bends and everything out of the path. He come to set things up for Jesus Christ. He come to prepare the way. Now, a lot of people say, prepare the way? Yeah, he breaking all the crooked and things and hatred, bitterness, even. He, he come here to straighten it out. So John the Baptist, what I like about John the Baptist, I look at John the Baptist, his sister, his mama was named Elizabeth, and his dad was named Zachariah, and she was kind of old in age, and so when she found herself conceived with him old in age, she went ahead herself, I think it was about five months, and uh, when John was in his mother's womb, now listen at this, when John was in his mother's womb, he received the Holy Ghost, ain't that something? He received the Holy Ghost. So that's the man we're going to be talking about this morning. A man that received the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Now, I've been here quite a while. I have never heard no man I know of today receive the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. So this man is called the John the Baptist. And I live when say, call to prepare the way. Now, he's going to prepare the way. Uh, he's going to get things out of the way and get things in order. So when Jesus Christ comes, it'll line up, line up. So he got to get all the crooks, all the, the whole, all, he got to get everything out of the way. He got to get all that old corruption stuff out of the way. So when Jesus comes, now I call him to prepare the way. Now I try to call myself sometimes, hey man, I say I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. A voice just crying the wilderness, telling the people the kingdom of God's in hand and telling them get right, get right. So now let's don't get ahead of ourselves. Let's see what we're going to do with this preparing the way. All right. I'm glad. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let, boy, we're going to have some Sunday school here in this morning with the help of the Lord. He say, verse one, in the old days came John the Baptist 
Now he say in those days, that's a plural possess that more than one day. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. In those days, John would begin to preach in the wilderness, a few words, and he was telling the people by from many other men with the same name, John the Baptist was an important part of his ministry. Now, John mother was Elizabeth and he was the first cousin. He was kin to Jesus Christ, but he was preaching in the wilderness. And he was telling them to get away. And he was telling them, John began preaching messages of repentance. Word translation mean preaching coming to the Greek word mean to be proclaimed. Turn away from your wrong. Get away from your evil thing. He was preaching to repent, to repent. And verse 2 say, and repent from the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He telling the people, John the Bell was preaching on the Messiah's coming. He was preparing the heart of the coming of the Messiah, trying to get the people right. He could only occur through repenting. John called the people to repent. John called the people to repent, to repent. Yes, Lord, calling the people to repent and to turn away from their sin. Now that's an S on sin. That don't mean one sin. Turn away from their sin and turn to God. And that would be a what? A truly repentance. Now, if you got, you can't, you can't set scrap the fence. You got to get rid of all that stuff. Get rid of it. Wipe it out. And then that would be a, a true repentance. And once you make a true repentance, I went to Second Corinthians 5 and 17, say, therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, old thing had passed away, behold, all things are new. Now, use a new creature in Christ. Now, Paul say, that's Apostle Paul talking in the book of Corinthians. You are a new creature. Now, you can't have step in this. You got to, if you have step, you still got that curve in that road. Uh, in that highway, you got to get straight. When you get that all that out of you, and I'm repentant of your sin, you got a straight runway. I never seen an airplane at the airport when they get ready to take off. They don't on that takeoff, on that takeoff, they don't have no curve in that takeoff. He got a straight way, and then he get up, he get airborne. He can't take off and try to get airborne in a curve. It ain't gonna work. So what I'm telling you, get all of that stuff out of you so you can be a new creature. And because the kingdom of heaven was near, and he's saying all this, and today Jesus Christ want a straight runway. And so in, in, in verse three again, he say, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Elijah saying, the voice of one is in the wilderness, preparing ye the way of the Lord and making the path straight. Now he out there in verse three, making it straight as one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. He was one of the greatest prophet, Elijah. So what I like to say now, the word uh, prepare is reverent to making something ready and the word pathway could be also translated as a road, but it also that he eastern. So he making the way, getting things right. So are we today, are we preparing? And he said, John was a prophet to urge people to confess their sin and live for God. Live for God. You got to repent so you can live for God. You can't have repent and live for God. You got to repent all the way to live for God. Some people say, oh, that's a that's a little sin. I can make it. He said, all sin is, a, is, is, a, is not right. All sin. He didn't say some sin. All sin is sin. He didn't say little sin or big sin. All sin is sin. Sin do not have a measurement. And so verse four said, and the same John had raiments on of a camel hair and leather girdle also as a lion 
and his meat was wild. It was honey and wild locals. Somebody said, wild honey and locals? Why would a man? So his message was powerful and true. He had a powerful message. So he said, all of that, he had a true message. John was were, uh, wearing were from camel hair, and he wore a leather belt. John dressed as like the prophet Elijah. He didn't come there all propped up. He dressed like Elijah. And 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 as you will find in the second King verse 1 8, he considered a measure of preparing the way for God. That's all he was thinking about, making a way for God, making a way for God. Are we thinking about that today with ourselves, with our neighbors and friends? Are we trying to help them to get their life right, to make them get their right life so they can make a prepared way for God when he comes? that he won't say, get beside or get behind me. So we still live to get people right and get ourselves right. And having separated himself from evil of this day, John lived different from other people to show that his message was new. So we can't live the same old way and do the same old thing what we've been doing and telling people that we've been we've been born again we don't repented from our sin who would listen to you if you out there you still doing your same thing over and over so we have to use a clean life we had to get rid of them old things we have to use a, repent and get that thing right in us repent repent of your sin now if you got um Roman 8 chapter and the 39th verse he say let nothing separate you from the love of God so we gonna keep that rule straight we can't let nothing separate us from the love of God we can't let money wife children home brand new car brand new truck we can't let nothing separate us from us from a God and so that's why he's saying let nothing he was out there wearing that all the heaven separate himself from evil. You got to separate yourself from evil. Now, listen what he was saying here. He said from other people to show that his message was new. He eaten, guess what he was eating? Locals and wild honey for surviving in the desert region. Now, locals, somebody said, what is a locust? A locust is nothing but an old hopper grass. And he was eating that. I don't eat no, but he was eating hopper grasses and wild honey. And why he was eating that? Cause he got there in that desert, so I, that, that desert he's living in, and the people was on the journey out there. They didn't have Popeye Church of Chicken and ham hocks and cornbread and collard green. They didn't have all that. All they was eating mostly like diet food, honey, and wild hopper grasses and stuff. You see. And that's what happened. That's why he came. And he didn't change it. That he went right along with them. And I always say, when you're in Rome, you got to act like the Roman. If I go somewhere and they ain't got nothing but chicken dump, I have to eat the chicken dump. If I go somewhere and they got uh, collard greens and cornbread and pigtails, I eat that. So I'm in Rome, I eat like that. So he didn't come there to steam himself from us. He did that to keep get their taint that know he was real and his message was true. And he said this, was sinners and need to repent, his measure was powerful and true. And people call hope to that. When you got a powerful, don't sugarcoat your measure. Don't sugarcoat it. Cause if you sugarcoat it, you're gonna bring dogma, you're gonna bring all kind of false document. If you ain't gonna say nothing right at all, don't fool with it. And so verse six said, let's see what verse, uh, uh, five say, then went out to Jerusalem and all the Judah there, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Judea and all the region round about Judah. He went all around. He just didn't stay in one place. Verse five say, he didn't stay. And from all over Judah in the valley, <coughs> excuse me, all in the valley, and went out in the wilderness to hear him preach. They went all out to hear him preach. When you preaching a good word, excuse me, when you preaching a good sermon and got a strong word, they went all out to hear him. 
Now, if you eat, if you got a good word and a good strong ministry, people will come out and listen at it. Don't sugarcoat it. It's just like a person, if you go somewhere and feed somebody, and they ain't got nothing but a little gumbo and a little soup, they ain't coming back. Most people want something heavy, red beans and rice and cornbread. Some people want hammocks and dirty rice, jam a lot. So if you feed the word like that, the spiritual food, they'll come back. If you feed the physical food, right, they'll come back. Yeah. Wow, well, preaching. He was preaching. John, John was preaching, y'all. Oh, yeah. They, too, were sinners and need to repent. They needed to repent. Do you see what he said? They need that. Let's you. Let's use the word in need. Is it a necessity to repent? A necessity to repent. It's not just a joke. You got to repent. So God can use it. I want to live so God can use me. So, and, um, and repent and, and and he he and he he repented and so uh verse six let's get the verse and well he was baptized they confessed their sin and the mention was powerful and true all right verse six said confess their sin all right they went to Jerusalem and all Judea and written about Judah mm -hmm. About Judah, he confessed his more simple knowledge. Sempha is a great, is a greeting. Oh man, confessing me more than just responding. All right. And then what he say? And he baptized them in the Jordan River. So he, he baptized them in the Jordan River, obeying his service. John baptized them in the Jordan River. Now, when he was, when you have dirty hand, you wash him, you clean him up. So that was a sign like baptism. You wash him up, you clean up. So John used a symbolic action that people could see. People like to see things, or uh, people like to feel things. So he did, and John baptized water, and he used the Jordan River. Now, why did he use the Jordan River? Because in the Delta, there wasn't that much water. And some part of, if you study the, the, the dictionary about Jordan River, some part was so salty, some part was deep, and some part was shallow. And some part was so salty, and where the salty region was, people could hardly form. So John baptized in the river of Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. And um, he's the only baptized. And when Jesus comes to baptize, he baptized on both sides of the river. Jesus baptized on both sides of the river? I say, yeah. I say, why? Because if he baptized them on both sides, so both sides could get the mention about baptism, so nobody wouldn't have no excuse. So that's why he was baptizing on both sides of the river. So verse 7 says, but when he saw many of the, the Pharisees and Sadducees come out of the come out to his baptism. Now look who gonna come to his baptism, the Sadducee and the Pharisee. And he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Mm -hmm. The wrath to come. Now they gonna come out there. And John was gladly to baptize the, the many repentant people who came out and confessed their sin. He was glad to do that. And we should be the same way. Now, the Sadducee Pharisee had exposed an anger of hypocrisy religiously. They were all. Now, now the, Sadducee, the Pharisee separate the Sadducee. And the Pharisee, now look what the Pharisee did. The Pharisee sent them, uh, themselves from anything non-Jewish, test law, and down through the century. The Sadducee believed on the Pentecost alone. Now Jesus, he was looking at them, and they didn't mean no good. Now they didn't believe in the, the Sadducee and thing. They didn't be the Sadducee didn't believe in the bapt uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And and look what you got to deal with. 
excuse me, he left, who want you to flee from God from many judgment. So John had a harsh and revealed in his word that followed the Pharisee, <coughs> excuse me, and the Sadducee. When we go to verse 8, y'all excuse me, bringing forth themselves, bringing forth fruit, meat for re repentance. You have to bring good fruit to repentance. So what kind of fruit you going to bring to repentance? <coughs> good fruit. I'm going to bring some good fruit. And the Pharisee and Sadducee didn't bring no good fruit. Living, revealing their true characters. So John said, prove the way you live, that you have really turned from your sin and turned to God. But John the Baptist called the people to more than words. He told them to change their behavior. If we have really turned from our sin and turned to God, our words and religion action must be, must back up what we say or judge our words by the action that we are accomplishing them. Do action match your word that you living for the day? Do it match up? Now, if your word and action match up what you live in the day and you going on a straight road, you repent and people read you like they read the Bible, and a lot of people be saved behind your living. Verse 9 said, and think to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of those stones that mean more than one to raise up children unto Abraham. God can raise them up. If they pound seed go bad and went and are corrupted even to the day, God can only one can raise them up if they repent and come to God. If they can repent, this uh, somewhere over the year, the Jews decided that the promise was given to them. And look what they did. No matter how they act or what they believe, John explained to them, however they relate on Abraham, their ancestors were qualify them to God kingdom. If you change your way, that old seed, that old rock, and old spiritual rock is an individual. He can be doing, that old rock can be doing anything bad that he shouldn't be doing. God is able to raise him or change the stone into children of Abraham. He said, rest and say, and John probably pointed out at the stones at the real bed and said, God can change these stones here into children of Abraham. The apostle Paul will later explain that to the Romans. Not everyone born into a Jewish family is truly a Jew. Just at the fact that they are the son of Abraham does not make them truly. So everybody, until they repent, then they can be the truly the son of Abraham. Repent, repent. And verse 10 say, truly repent. And he say, now also the ax laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. If you don't bring no good fruit, he gonna cast you down into the fire. And what you mean gonna cast you into the fire on a day of a judge me and say, get me, he will say, you did it good, East. You taught Sunday school, but you uh, you didn't bring the fruit like you did. You had a good word. You talked good, but you didn't live it. You said good thing, but you didn't repent. So now you got to go to the lake of fire. That's your consequence. He's going to cut you down. Just like you would cut your apple tree down. If you don't bring no apples, man, I'm going to put an axe to it. If you got a plum tree, it don't bring both fruit. He got to repent and get right so he can bring fruit. He got to be fertilized. He got to be attentive. 
So how am I gonna get this tree? I got me as a tree. How am I from? How am I bring forth good fruit? I got to repent. I got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I got to get the fruits of the Spirit in my heart, Lord joy. I got to get joy in my heart. I got to get meekness in my heart, so I won't get cut down. I got to love everybody. I got to love the one that's spite for use me. That's good fruit there, y'all. So he ain't gonna put no eggs to me. He gonna bless me. Amen. And verse 10, come on, Sunday school. Verse 10 say, and I lay unto the root there. That's verse 11. Indeed, baptize you with water and unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mighty than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. And bear down, he said, he shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. And he coming, y'all. He gonna baptize us after John had made a way. He gonna baptize with fire and the Holy Ghost that we can go and be with Jesus Christ, be with Jesus Christ, and go and be with the Lord. And verse four say, twelve say, who fame is in hand, and he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather up the wheat into the barn. Mm -hmm. But he will burn up the shelf with unscrupulous fire. So when he get ready. Get us, he gonna clean us, he gonna bring you know how a man in the barn he hold up the chat the, the 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 seed and let them fall the grain and when the wind it blow all the shaft away and pure grain hit the floor. And then he holds some more and then he so he won't mix the shaft and the wheat up together. So he cleans it out. So that's how God after we repent. If you don't repent, he gonna blow you out. You got to repent. You got to get with all of that stuff. You got to repent from the uh, Galatians 5 and 19, the work of the flesh. You got to repent from all of that. Remember that. Read that, somebody. Galatians 5 and 19. That's the shelf that he gonna blow. He, you, can't, you can't keep that and fall with good seed. So what? We gonna do today. We gonna repent and fall with good seeing. Lord, we thank you for the lesson. Due to time, see like my little time is out on me, and so we thank you so much for the Sunday school lesson. And Lord, that you be blessed. And as you come in a new year, we ask you to blow the shelf out of our life, <sighs> blow it out, so we can have a good life that we can go back with Jesus Christ. And during the time we on earth, we can receive our blessing. God bless you. God keep you. And Lord, look on that virus. Get the curve out of it. And help the people. Bless the one that lost a level one, the loved one. Look on them, Lord. Look the one on sick bed. And look on the one that is on ventilator. Bless them, Lord. And look on the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.